If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides, the show that helps you to claim your space, set your boundaries, own your power, internalize your sense of value, learn how to love yourself. We are here today, as always, with my friend, Catherine Langer. I am Kelly Sparta, your host. And we are transformational coaches and in both the personal and spiritual space, as well as in the business space. And today we are going to talk about the devil's handshake and other bad ideas. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, by now you guys have figured out that I like the funky fun titles and uh, that there's a whole lot of snark and we like the snark because that makes the journey f more fun. So, and it also keeps us from wanting to go Rah! when we get upset, right? <laughs> so <laughs> snark is good. So the, uh, the devil's handshake and other bad ideas in, in, in this particular construct, what we're talking about is what are the agreements that you make with your business that you may or may not consciously know you're making, right? And so, you know, Catherine actually suggested this topic, which I adore because, you know, I don't talk about it from this angle, which is one of the reasons why I love having you on the show is because you give me different perspectives to talk about things from. And so since this was your topic idea, I'm going to let you start the, the conversation and then uh, I'll stick my two cents in as we go along. Yeah, absolutely. So, so before I kind of jump into the topic, also wanted to kind of bring forward the idea, the concept that the universe actually loves playfulness. And so, so often, you know, we can kind of get stuck in taking ourselves, taking our business, our life just way too seriously. And we get stuck into this sense of rigidity. And so when we can actually laugh a little bit at ourselves and just open it up a little bit more, the universe really responds to us in that way. So the topic, the devil's handshake and other bad ideas, it's really the idea of agreements. And I'm not talking about, you know, contracts or, or deals with the devil. Or, yeah, nothing <laughs> like that. Like we're not, we're not going to be making any deals with the devil. And then Kelly, maybe a little bit later, you can even talk about soul contracts and kind of get into some of the, the other yeah. aspects like that. But what I'm really inviting you to consider is the idea that we all make agreements. And by that, I mean, we're making an agreement with an idea. So it could be uh, an identity about who we think that we are, see ourselves to be. It could be a concept. It could be a perception of somebody else. It could be an idea of what's possible for us. And so when we're making an agreement with something, we're basically saying like, this is what I believe. And it does a couple of things. So the first thing that it does is it actually gives your subconscious mind a directive. So when you make an agreement, for example, with, uh, you know, this is going to be really hard, or this is going to be a challenge, you're telling your subconscious mind, find all the evidence that makes that true. And make sure that my experience of this is hard and challenging. The other thing that it does when you make an agreement is it tells the universe itself, this is what I want. I want challenge. I am a vibrational match for hard and challenging. And so then, of course, you're going to become a magnet to that. You're going to have more of those experiences. So the things that don't fit, quote unquote, with your agreement, you're going to, your mind is going to filter those out or you're going to dismiss them, right? So if your agreement is that this is going to be really difficult, it's going to be a huge challenge. Say maybe one of your team members brings forward an idea that would just make it really easy. You're going to just dismiss that because it doesn't fit in your idea of, of it's going to be hard. And so some of the common agreements that I hear with my clients is this is going to be difficult. 
And then the, the counter to that, because what we want to do then is to start to challenge the agreement a little bit and open up our mind so that we're open to different possibilities and experiences. So when we're noticing that we're maybe thinking or saying or acting in a way that says, this is going to be hard, this is going to be a challenge, the counter to that is to ask a question, well, what if it was easy? What if it was easy? And probably even just hearing me say that, you can feel your mind going a little bit like, what? What do you mean? What if it was easy? But it's going to be hard, damn it. It's going to be hard. So that's one question. Another question or another agreement that I hear a lot of people making is that there's not enough to go around, right? The scarcity agreement or the agreement with not valuing your time, the agreement that there's a lot of competition, so it's going to be difficult. The agreement that I have to work really, really hard and really, really long to, to make my business successful. The agreement that, you know, good team members are hard to find. So there's so many agreements that start to really limit our experience. And the counter to that is to ask that question, well, what if it was easy? What if there was more than enough to go around? What if there were like amazing team members just waiting to join my business? What if I was a successful business person? We also make identity agreements. So I don't know how to do this. I'm not good enough. You know, everybody else knows what what they're doing. I don't. So Kelly, I'm seeing lots of nodding here and I just shared a lot. So I'd love to kind of pass it over to you and open it up to hear, hear what's resonating for you and what your thoughts are on this topic. Yeah, so this this applies to it, it not I know I said business in the beginning of this episode, but it also applies to your career as well. So, you know, I had a client who was she she was kind of a unicorn. She did a lot of different things in a lot of different areas and she was like, yeah, I don't really fit into a particular job description. I do, you know, basically she cross-pollinated across multiple different positions. And as a result, she assumed that she was not going to be able to get another job somewhere else. And despite the fact that she had multiple departments fighting for her, trying to get her to be in the in their department. And, you know, she worked for a big, big company. And I looked at her, I was like, okay, so a unicorn is a magical creature. She used this term to describe herself, right? I said, a unicorn is a magical creature who has healing properties. That is a, a like mythical creature because they are so rare, but somehow you think this is gonna make you less money? I'm like, what, what is wrong with this picture, right? This, this was an agreement she had made with herself for, you know, I'm not as valuable, right? And so once we, overcame that, uh, you know, she went and found another job that was, if I remember correctly, it was like a 25000 or $50,000 a year raise, and she got a relocation bonus and stock options and, 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 you know, they, she had multiple offers from multiple companies, and she just got to pick the one that she liked the best that, that let her live where she wanted to live. So, you know, there was, there was a whole lot of, you know, breaking that agreement had a huge impact on her life. Right. And, you know, I talk about this with my my spiritual coach clients and my spiritual practitioner clients. And, you know, what I see from them a lot is that they will undercharge. And that is them saying, I don't believe in my value. Uh, But it's also they're they're accounting for something that they're doing that they're not really conscious that they're doing, which is. They're asking for validation and payment, and therefore they're charging less because they know that they need to monetarily account for the validation that they're asking for as part of the work. So the point here is that, you know, you should be at the point where you're not asking for validation anymore by the time you're trying to charge for your services, because that that inherently says, I don't know my value. I need you to tell my value to me. And that's when we undercharge is when we do that. So, you know, these are just some other options, absolutely everything you said too. <laughs> but, but, you know, these are, these are the things that, that, uh, you know, imposter syndrome gets in the way a lot. And that's a big one that everybody does. Right. And so, you know, when we're talking about this stuff, you know, there's a lot of different pieces and parts and, and, 
one of the biggest challenges is being able to identify the agreement you're making. Because, you know, if it's a belief, then you may recognize that you have it, right? But if it's an assumption, these are things that we do not think about. Like we don't worry about whether or not gravity exists and we're going to float off the floor. We just assume that we will be standing on the floor, no problem. And in fact, we're more worried about falling onto the floor than about floating off of the floor because we assume gravity, right? Assumptions are like that in our lives. If we have these beliefs at an assumption level, they can be truly debilitating and very difficult to identify in our own life without having somebody from the outside looking in, right? Because we don't question our assumptions. That's the definition of an assumption, right? Mm -hmm. Beliefs are much easier. So I'm going to throw it back to you. Yeah. You know, and I think, Kelly, too, we make agreement with conditions, right? And by that, you know, what I'm talking about is we're making an agreement with something outside of ourselves and we're giving our power to that. So, you know, there might be an agreement, maybe you are desiring like a loving relationship in your life. And, and we make these agreements, not just in business and career, but like every aspect of our life. So, yes. you know, maybe you're desiring that loving partnership, but the agreement that you've made is that all the good ones are taken. So if you are agreeing with that idea that all the good ones are taken, well, then you're not going to take any action at all to become that vibrational match to the partner that you would desire. You know, sometimes we make an agreement with the idea that, oh, I don't have the right you know, education, or I don't have the experience, or I'm too old, or I'm too young, or I'm too fat, or I'm too thin, or I'm too this, or I'm too that. All of those things are agreements that we're making to things outside of us. And so when we notice we're doing that, we can ask the question, well, what if it was possible? What if it was possible? So maybe you're thinking something like, oh, I can't, you know, achieve the business results that I would desire because I don't have the contacts in the industry or I don't have the experience or I don't have the testimonials or I can't find the team members to grow or I haven't met the revenue goals that I've set for myself. Asking yourself that question, well, what if it was possible? And sometimes what happens is that when we start to open up our mind, when we start to soften those agreements, when we start to ask those questions, our mind doesn't know what to do with it. It's like, muh, muh. Well, like I don't even know what that means. Well, what if it was possible? Well, it's not possible. That inner voice is going to jump up and say, well, that's a stupid question. It's not possible. So the counter to that is just to hold the question. Well, what if it was, right? What if I did know what to do? What if I was a successful business person? What if it was easy? So when you start to ask those questions, you're interrupting the pattern in your mind that believes that assumption, and you're opening yourself up to different possibilities, different ideas, different synchronicities, different opportunities. Yeah. And, and this is the other piece too, is that, and you talked about that lack-based mentality. I see this a lot with people who are just getting started in business and and they're like, they're hanging out with other people who are just getting started in business and who have no money. And so they think nobody has any money and they have to adjust their prices because nobody has money. And then they attract people who have no money and then they have to negotiate and then nobody makes payments and there's, all right, there's all this stuff that happens, right? And the... The truth of the matter is that your income is the average of the 10 people you spend the most time with. And so when you are choosing to spend your time with people, and one of the things I tell people who are stuck in this sort of lack-based mentality is to go out and find places where moneyed people hang out and go hang out with them. So like real estate investment groups are a great way to do that because there's a lot of people with money in those groups and they welcome anybody in the door who wants to learn about real estate investing. I'm not saying go be a real estate investor. I'm saying that these groups are a great place to get your energy into the vibrational alignment with people who have money, right? And this is the piece is that when we have these belief structures we are resonating with these beliefs and therefore we are attracting the, the reality, quote unquote, of that experience 
which then reinforces the belief, which then reinforces the energetic, which then creates more of what you've had for the whole time, right? And so long as you don't change the energy that you're putting into that machine, you're going to continue to get those results. And so, you know, this is one of those things where it's super important to be conscious about what your thoughts are, what your dominant thoughts are, and what media you consume as well, because the media that you consume will support that. I've been, I, I, I love TikTok. And so I've been curating my TikTok feed to take out anything talking about bad economy in the US, because I don't want that belief structure in my business. <laughs> you know, I don't want to, I don't want to be talking about that. There are plenty of people on the app who are talking about here. Here's how I'm making tons of money. Okay, great. I will, I will have those people in my feed and I will have other things like, you know, dogs and dancing and all the things that I enjoy about the app. But the, the, you have to curate because what comes in is what, what comes in is what comes out. Right. So, you know, you got to be really careful about what you put into your energy as you're going through your day. You want to curate it effectively so that you are not buying into and subscribing into fear, anxiety, worry, dread, self doubt, judgments, you know, all of that stuff. And as long as you're not buying into that, then, then your, your ability to shift your energy is so much stronger. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I love that, Kelly. It really is about the frequency, right? And so everything is energy, everything like my phone, my notepad, the trees that I'm looking at outside my window, like it's all energy and everything has a frequency. And so your dominant vibration is going to reflect itself in your reality. The, the best definition I heard of manifestation or my favorite definition is that manifestation is the physical byproduct of a dominant vibration. So I'm going to say mm -hmm. that again, the physical byproduct of a dominant vibration. So if your vibration is one of fear and scarcity and lack and challenge and difficulty, the physical representation of that is going to be reflective of those beliefs and those vibrations. So if you're curious about what is my dominant vibration, what is the dominant belief structure, you can just take a look around and see, right? And yeah. so one of the one of the tools and strategies that I give my clients when they're looking at shifting their their agreement is to notice okay so what is the what is the agreement that I'm wanting to shift am I making an agreement that it's going to be challenging or that it's going to be hard or that I can't do it or I don't know what I'm doing or there's no opportunities out there so you just you pick one right pick one and then start to collect evidence to dispute it so you're looking for like minuscule little things. So maybe you're thinking like, it's, oh, it's going to be really hard. So then maybe something happens during the day where it's actually easy. Your pattern is going to be to dismiss that as a coincidence or nothing. It doesn't really matter. You know, it doesn't count. So to counter it, what you want to do is actually write it down, track it. And, and physically writing it down is important because your brain is going to filter out anything that doesn't fit the agreement that you're making. So when yeah. you start to track it, you're actually telling your, your brain, your subconscious, the universe that this is now what I'm interested in is where it's easy or where I'm abundant or where I'm skillful or where I'm confident or whatever those things are. And it, it can start to really snowball very, very quickly. I've, my clients just have phenomenal results when they do that. So there's a little yeah. strategy for you to try. Well, and I, I have a personal story about that. Actually, I was at workshop retreat and I had been in the room trying to get into conversations and there were a bunch of different people in little groups having conversations and I couldn't get into any of the conversations because they were in the midst of something. And so I sat down by myself feeling dejected and sad and rejected, you know, for the record, this was about 15 years ago, but the, uh, 
my roommate at the time came down and sat down next to me and said, Hey, what's going on? And I'm like, nobody wants to talk to me. You know, I, I can't get into any of the conversations and I'm just feeling so unwelcome. And which was my core wound I was working on at the time, by the way. So feeling unwelcome and unwanted and unimportant and all of those things. And so, you know, she, she looked at me and she's like, well, but, but I'm here and I'm talking to you and I swear to you, I had to clamp my mouth shut to stop the words, yeah, but you don't count from coming flying out of my mouth. Mm. And I chomped on those words and then I outed myself to her and said, huh, okay, so this is my story because this is what just wanted to come flying out of my mouth. And she's like, oh, that's very interesting. I'm like, yeah, isn't it though? And I said, you know what? I think I'm just going to go get over myself and I'm going to go dance in the other room and stop it because this is just a story and it's not true. And so, you know, I had that, that moment to just have that aha on that. And thankfully, you know, I had enough education from before to, to recognize it and be able to unwind it. But yeah, that's, that's exactly what happens. And sometimes we're conscious of it and sometimes we're not, but, but the, yeah, but you don't count is a real thing. That is absolutely what happens when you are trying to shift a dominant vibration to something else is you will ignore all the evidence that doesn't support your current story. And this is about collecting the evidence so that you can break your current story, right? Yeah. So totally true. <laughs> and, so, and, and so interesting, right? Like not interesting in the sense of like, oh, that's surprising, but just interesting in the sense of like, this is how it works. So yeah. when you have that, you know, that kind of core belief that you're working with, you're emitting that frequency. And so of course, nobody welcomed you into the conversations, right? Because right. you probably approached in a certain way and your frequency is at a certain level. So uh, yeah, just so fascinating. So fascinating. I love that. Kelly, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. So, you know, this is, this is the stuff that we're talking about here. Now I want to talk about the opposite side of that, which is delusion and, oh, and okay. toxic positivity, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So I want to, because a lot of times you'll tell people this and they'll be like, oh, well, I just have to fake it till I make it. Mm -hmm. And kind of a little bit, but not really, right? Mm -hmm. It's a, you have to buy into the belief that things could be different, but it's not about being delusional mm -hmm. in that belief. And it's not about being positive, even when you are in a miserable state. Mm -hmm. That is trying to do that is toxic positivity. And it's a spiritual trap. It's a spiritual yeah. bypass, right? Yeah, it's, it's not actually going to move you if you're just going, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich. And you look at your bank account, and you're doing nothing to manage it. You're doing nothing to maintain it. You're doing nothing to be in integrity around your money. You've got money all over the floor of your house all over the bottom of your car, where you're not stewarding the money that you have effectively, and you're, you're, you have no idea what's in your bank account, you don't keep track of, of anything, you don't know if you've gotten double charged on anything, because you don't check your numbers on your bank account. If you're doing nothing to be in integrity around money, but walking around and saying, I'm rich, that's an internal inconsistency that is going to bite you in the butt, it's not going to help you. And what will happen is you'll probably spend money you don't have, to try and prove to yourself that you're rich because you don't know that you don't have it because you're pretending and you're living in a fantasy. And this is one of the challenges is you cannot live, you can't invest in a fantasy. You can invest in an outcome, but you can't, you shouldn't, you can, but you shouldn't invest in a fantasy because investing in a fantasy will end up with you, uh, not manifesting what you want. And oftentimes it will damage you in some way. You know, if it's a financial fantasy, you'll end up more in debt. If it's a romantic fantasy, you'll end up, you know, stalking somebody that doesn't like you, right? There's lots of ways in which this can manifest. So you need to be careful about the difference between a fantasy and a reality and a goal, right? So, you know, there's, and I, I want to take the word goal back too, because this, the word goal is a future based thing. And the energy we're talking about is a present based thing. Goal is a head based thing. 
The energy we're talking about is a body-based thing, right? This is our beingness that we're talking about. And I, I really, I help, when I talk to people, I'm like, look, let go of the goal of being, being spiritually evolved. If you're trying to become spiritually evolved, let go of the goal because the goal is in the future and you can only evolve in the present. And so instead become the person who is constantly in pursuit of spiritual growth, you know, be, become the person who grows at every opportunity that they are presented with. Right. And doesn't run from it, doesn't shirk from it, doesn't go, I feel uncomfortable, whatever. So it's a beingness state change, not a future based state change. So we need to be really clear about that difference. Right. And so, you know, there's a difference between walking around with your fingers in your ears and your eyes co closed going, la, 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 I'm rich, I'm rich, la, 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 I'm rich. Right. That's the fantasy piece. But you can say, wow, that was an unexpected bill. I'm going to go pay it. Good thing I'm rich, right? And that is a statement of beingness, right? That gives you a beingness shift, assuming you have the money to pay it, okay? If you don't have the money to pay that bill, then taking responsibility for the bill and saying, okay, so I'm going to make a phone call and I'm going to say, you know, hey, this was unexpected. Can I make payments over X amount of time? Because that's what rich people do. They take responsibility for their money. They have good stewardship of their money. They, they treat money as a person that they have a relationship with rather than somebody that they're trying not to pay any attention to because they don't want to see what's in their bank account, right? That sort of thing. So I see you writing feverishly. So I know you have some notes. So go ahead. <laughs> Yeah. So, okay. So yes to the spiritual bypass, right? So, so we, it's this thing where we're, we're choosing to embody a new frequency. And when we're spiritually bypassing, it's, it is that, like you said, the toxic positivity, right? Like that's not helpful. So often that can come up when maybe we're evolving. And what happens when we evolve is that again, think about everything is energy. So you can't have two different energies existing at the same time in the same place. And so as you're evolving, what's going to happen is that old frequencies, you know, beliefs, limitations, stories about yourself, as you're evolving into a newer version of you, those things are going to emerge and they emerge for a couple of reasons. One is to repattern one is to release. And then the third reason they come up is because they're trying to keep you back down to what your comfort zone was. So they're going to actively try to bring you back down to what is familiar. So if in business, you're maybe you spend lots of time scrolling on social media, and you're calling it quote, unquote, research, but you're not not actually like putting an offer out, or, you know, reaching out to people or doing the, the things that are going to move you forward you you want to be noticing what is trying to pull you back right so so the spiritual bypass is when you're ignoring those things and just trying to kind of overrun it so you need to actually release a repattern those old limiting beliefs and sometimes that means feeling it sometimes that means kind of going into it sometimes that means you know taking a look at it so that you can repattern it what it is not about is it is not about pitching a tent in it. You're not, you know, setting up a phone number in the old stuff. You're not taking out a zip code. You're, you're dipping in to release it, to repattern it. And then you're moving back up to the dominant frequency. So then I also want to talk about goals because I actually disagree with you a little bit, Kelly. Oh, okay. Let's talk. Like, okay. Let's talk about this. So I love so, a good debate. <laughs> so, so you'll know that in the work that I do with conscious entrepreneurs, we actually do do goal setting and we do mm -hmm. it a little bit differently. We come from the vision and we talked about that a little bit in, in a previous, previous recording. And I think we'll talk about it again in a future one. Ad nauseum. Yes. <laughs> 
about what would I love, right? So when you ask that question, what would I love? Not what do I think is possible? What does the economy say? What does my education say? But like, what would I actually love? And it's starting to open you up to bigger dreaming, that possibility thinking. It's helping you step outside of the agreements that you're currently making. So we start with that question at three years because it relaxes the subconscious mind and we bring it into 12 months. From that 12 month vision, we set goals. Now goals we set to grow. We set the goals because they are giving us a direction. So we're saying that in my, and in business, it's always going to be a revenue goal because that's how we mm-hmm. measure business success. Um, so we set that goal because it's going to give us clues about who is the person who has evolved or grown to experience that result. So who is the woman or man or person who, who has done that? What are they thinking? What agreements do they make about their business? What decisions do they make? What actions are they taking? So we can get really curious about what is that evolved version of me really look like, feel like, act like, think like, and then how do I then bring it into the present, right? As starting to be that way now. So there is that beingness and the goal gives us clues about the direction, clues about that person. So, you know, if my goal is to create a multi-million dollar business, that person, that woman, that man is showing up differently than the person, woman, man who has a $50,000 a year business, right? Right. Yeah. So and we are not disagreeing at all. So mm-hmm. the difference is that I spend about mm, maybe 10 minutes in the goal and then I bring it all back into the into the present to mm-hmm. to begin to embody that person. Um yes. and so, you know, I I get that it may take other people longer to do that because I've had a lot of practice and uh, you know, when you had a lot of practice <laughs> things get faster, but uh, you know, in the fir- in the beginning it takes you a while to do this. But to get the vision and then the the identity is the way I'm going to phrase it, the identity that you step into of that yeah. business owner who has that result, yeah. right? That and But that's exactly what I'm saying, though, is that once you have that identity, once you have that uh, intention in place, then you got to get out of that. You got to not be in that, oh, I'm living in that future state of, you know, I already have it. Instead, you're building into the state of, I am that person, right? Because the beingness of the person creates the havingness of the reality, right? And so the, a lot of law of attraction stuff is like, oh, well, you know, just, you know, see very clearly what you want and put it out in the universe and let it come back and blah, 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 a lot. And, and that's great. And a lot of times it works. Sometimes it works a little sideways, depending upon what your blocks are in your own beingness. Um, and at the same time, if your current state of beingness is not, does not support your having the thing you're trying to manifest, you won't get it. And my classic example of this is actually a relationship. I often see people making lists of things that they want from their prospective partner and not in any way considering whether or not they are the person that that person would want to be with. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that is the most powerful shift you can make to attract that new person into your beingness is to shift who you are being so that you are the person that they would want to be with because just trying to manifest the person is not going to do anything for you if you're not the person they would want to be with. And so, you know, this works in business, it works in personal life, it works in spiritual stuff, it works in, you know, everything, Mm -hmm. everything, It, it goes across everything you'll ever do. And so, you know, the, we're very much saying the same thing, which is embody the beingness of the state that you're looking to step into. Mm -hmm. And the more you can do that, the more you call that beingness into existence. So, you know, for instance, I'm looking at up leveling my business pretty dramatically in the next few months. And I have been doing all the things, right? I have been taking all the meetings. I have been arranging to outsource all the things. I have been doing all the things because if I wait until it happens to do it, 
I'm going to get caught flat footed and I'm going to be playing catch up and I'm going to be burning out and frying. And I don't want to be doing that. And so the other thing I've done is I've arranged a a vacation for the weekend after this podcast starts. (laughs) Because, um, you know, because we're pre-recording the first few weeks of this just so that we have enough episodes in the can to, that we have time to make shifts if we need to and whatnot. And, uh, you know, I'm taking a vacation on the weekend after the first week of this podcast because I'm going to need the break. Right. I'm we've been working really hard up until now to get this going. And part of what I am manifesting into my experience is having a balanced life. And I'm like, I'm tired. So I'm taking a lot of this week off because I'm tired. And then, you know, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to have a full four day vacation that I'm going to go on and just take a little downtime um, because that is what a balanced life looks like. And I'm living into that, right? You know, I'm also living into how do I outsource everything except what I should be doing, which is another step that you get to when you get to my stage of business, which is outsourcing everything so that your team is doing the the work of the business and you are not the pinch point in anything that's going on in your business, right? Except for content creation. And so, you know, this is the... This is the, well, content creation and service providing, I should say. Um, but this is part of what living into the vision looks like, right? It's, it's that thing. It's I'm making agreements with people. It's like, okay, I'm hiring you on this day and I'm hiring you on that day. And we'll, you know, call me in three weeks or call me in six weeks. And, you know, I'll be at this stage by then and I'll be ready to talk to you at that point. I'm scheduling meetings with the assumption that everything is going to work as intended. And I have no doubt that that will be the case because I am embodying it in this moment, right? That's the differential. So we're, we agree. We just are using yeah. different language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think we're kind of getting close to time, but there's so yeah. much we can talk about here. Well, you good know, thing we have a whole podcast. <laughs> yeah. And identity and the importance of belief and faith and expectancy and taking aligned action and how do you embody and, and, you know, what does a vision look like for, cause it's going to be different for everybody. So for you, a balanced life looks like taking, you know, a vacation for some other people that might look like, Oh, I just work four hours a day or, you know, right. like there's so many variables about this. Yeah. Well, and for me, it does look like fewer hours a day too. You know, I've been, forward shifting my days so, because I'd like to be done by three. I like to be done by three o'clock my time if I can. And so I'm moving my days forward. And, you know, some of my clients are actually showing up like Josh, when Josh and I do the podcast on Mondays, uh, he and I meet at seven in the morning to do those podcasts. So, uh, and Catherine's like, oh, she's like 10 o'clock to my start. I, I would not love that. <laughs> I'm but happy with the dogs at 7 a.m. <laughs> looking at the mountains. <laughs> yeah, but Josh and I are up at like 5 30, 6 o'clock on a daily basis anyway. So to us, that's a that's a good time to start. And so, you know, and that that w- allows me to get my day started earlier. I can finish earlier and I can work fewer hours. And, you know, that's the other thing I've been doing is stopping doing a lot of the other marketing stuff that I've been doing because the podcast has been the most successful thing for me and podcasting has been the most successful thing for me in the past. And so I'm like, hmm, let's just double down on what works, right? So that's where we are with this. And so, yeah, all good things, right? All right. So I think we need to wrap this up for today. Yes, yes we do. <laughs> okay. So if you guys have questions, you can ask questions. Just send me an email at kelly at kellysparta.com or you can go to the spiritguidespodcast.com and enter. You can, uh, there's a speak pipe thing there. You can hit a button and you can record up to five minutes of a question and then let us know whether or not we can record that and, you know, use that recording on air to answer the question, but we would love to answer your questions. So by all means, go ahead and put those in and don't forget to like, rate and share and, and subscribe. And, uh, if you are rating and reviewing on Apple podcasts or Apple iTunes, you will be entered into, if you follow the instructions on the Spirit Guides podcast website, you will be entered into the drawing for once a week, you'll get a drawing to potentially be on the podcast here and have me do a reading for you. 
And out of the eight winners, one person will be drawn who will get a $25,000 VIP day with me. And wow. so, yeah, that's, that's a good deal. So make sure you go. Yeah. But it has to be on Apple iTunes or Apple podcasts. So if you go in and rate, hopefully a five star, but give us your honest rate and a review, and then just send over the information as per the instructions on the spirit guides podcast.com website. And then we will get in touch if you are one of our winners and we'll announce the winners every week. All right. And that's it for this time. So come back next time when we will add another chapter into your guide to living well, having fun, and taking no shit from anybody. <laughs> I'm going to change the end of this every single time. I swear it's going to be fun. All right. Have a good one, guys. Bye. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh, I'm